Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to cross the Orosund once again and we're going to go back to Seeland in Denmark and revisit a brewery that's featured on the channel a good few times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the last little while. They are still a relatively new addition to the Danish beer scene, but they have been doing some very nice stuff. I think it's fair to say that this brewery are best known for their different kinds of IPAs and stuff like this. But the beer that we're going to have a look at today is a little bit of a special one. It goes to the completely opposite end of the spectrum from what we've had from them before and I have heard very very good things about it actually. So quite curious to see what it's going to have in store for us. So hopefully it's another good beer, hopefully it makes for an interesting review and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then we are going to head to Vidovre which is a little bit to the southwest of Copenhagen in the east of Sjælland in eastern Denmark and we're going to have a look at another beer from Slowburn Brewing Cooperative. So this particular beer is called Gargantua. It comes in at 12% ABV and this one is a bourbon barrel aged imperial stout. So uh, yeah, a little bit of a monster and this is the first beer that we're having from them from their barrel aging program and also the first one that comes out of a bottle as well actually. So uh, yeah, this should be pretty interesting. And when I saw this one, this is one of these beers where I just saw it and I thought, you know, fuck it, we have to have a try of this. So really, really looking forward to this, actually. So let's crack on then and see how we go. Always nice to review some different beers from Slowburn Brewing Cooperative, of course. So, as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Slowburn Brewing Cooperative before, and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into to the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, or whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Danish beers that I've reviewed for you and that's being added to quite regularly because I live in the south of Sweden and go over to Copenhagen regularly as well so always pick up some Danish goodies when I'm there and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about Slowburn Brewing then. So Slowburn Brewing, as I've mentioned to you already, are based in Fedovra, which is to the southwest of Copenhagen. And the company was founded back in 2018 by Amelie Knage, Stefano Ereni and also Andrew Keaton. So Amelie worked at Ullen Brood, which is one of the various Mikeler venues around Copenhagen. She also worked at Shiosk as well, and she started one of the first kombucha breweries in Copenhagen, which is called Valverk Kombucha, but she gradually moved into home brewing beer. But now she assists in the brewing side of things and manages the sales and distribution side of Slowburn Brewing Cooperative. Stefano, on the other hand, is the head brewer. He's originally from Milan in Italy, and he studied biotechnology before going on to work for B Fichio Rurale in Italy before moving to Denmark to work for White Labs Yeast Company and he also worked at the Fermentorum Beer Bar as well actually which is just down from the meatpacking district quite close to the central station in Copenhagen. I do recommend that you go and check that out as well. Andrew was originally from the US and he moved over to Copenhagen back in 2010 when the Nordic beer scene was just in its infancy. But he comes from a background in software engineering and development and he deals with the finance and social media side of the brewery. But he also likes to experiment a little bit with uh, sour beer and barrel aging and things like that as well. And uh, Slowburn have been starting to release some uh, sour beers and as you can see this is one of the ones from the Barrel Aging Project as well. So I'll need to see about having a look at one of their sour beers and see if I can get a hold of one of them the next time I go across to uh, to Copenhagen, actually. So that's that's the next stage for these guys. But um, as I said to you, as of, uh, over the last few years, they've been kind of just building up their repertoire of different beers. They've been doing a few more collaborations and things like this. And as of March 2022, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced around 50 different kinds of beer. But uh, yeah, I would say the ones you really need to try from these guys, the Octo Pills is, is very, very nice. I really enjoy that one. 
Um, the uh, oh, they've got a really good West Coast IPA and a really good New England one that they do regularly. One of them has, I think it's Backs of Giants, it's called, uh, and the Vox Fulipi, if I remember the name rightly, is the New England one. But yeah, those are probably the three kind of core beers that you need to try. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, I think uh, Slowburn Brewing Cooperative are a very solid all round brewery. So quite exciting to see them do some, you know, bigger and kind of heavier alcohol beers as well actually they have got a barley wine that i'm going to see if i can get a hold of at some point but uh, yeah that's all i can really tell you about Slowburn brewing cooperative for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on facebook and instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can of course check out the rate beer untapped and beer advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done so uh, yeah let's crack on then and have a little look at this beer itself. So I'll just let you have a wee look at the artwork before we open it up. As you can see, it is a wee bit different there. I'm not sure what the inspiration behind um, this kind of thing is, actually. It does look a little bit like it could be, you know, yeast or something like that doing its thing and multiplying. I'm really not sure. But it's a plain black bottle cap on this one. Incidentally, it is a... Uh, um, incidentally, it is a 500 milliliter bottle, this, so it is a bit of a beast, especially when it's a 12% Imperial Stout. It tells you a little bit about the beer on the side here. So it says, like the giant Gargantua, the beer resting in this bottle is big, bold, and full of personality. A thick and complex wort was fermented using an English strain that left behind a good amount of residual sugars. The black nectar was then transferred to fresh bourbon barrels where it aged for 12 months. The result is a rich stout showcasing aromas of dried plums and figs together with notes of tobacco and oak. The flavor is thick with dried fruits, licorice, vanilla, bourbon, and balanced sweetness. So, uh, yeah, sounds pretty good, I have to say, but we'll make our own judgments about the flavour. But yeah, this beer was bought at Shiosk in Copenhagen. I actually paid a little bit more for this one. This was about 110 Danish kroner, so that's somewhere in the region of 140 Swedish, so about 14 euros, uh, which will translate to roughly, you know, 12 pounds sterling, maybe about $16 American, something like that. So this beer was a little bit more expensive, but it was kind of one of these kind of fuck it moments. Let's let's just do it. So yeah, treated myself to this beer, I think I should say. And I do hope that I can get a hold of their barley wine at some stage as well. But the reason it's probably a bit more expensive is because it's a 500 mil rather than like a 330 or a 440 or whatever. But uh, yeah, let's crack this guy open and see how we get on. There was actually a note on what this is named after. So it's named after Gargantia, who was the father of Pantarul, and he's a giant that appears in the novels of Francois Ravelet from the 16th century. That's where the name Gargantua comes from. So yeah, let's get this guy open though, and we'll crack on with it. So yeah, the Gargantia, 12% bourbon barley East Imperial Stout from Slowburn Brewing Company in Fedovra to the southwest of Copenhagen on Sealand in Denmark. You can smell the bourbon on this as soon as you open it up. But let's get this guy out and into the glass. So, look at that. That's mental. That is actually mental. Yeah. So, I have a, a take-home exam for one of my courses to do today, and that's why I kind of thought I've written quite a chunk of it, but to finish it off, I think I need a bit more motivation, actually. So that's why we're cracking this beer up. This is going to be my sipper when I'm finishing off this paper. But anyway, but yeah, anyway, uh, as you can see, this beer has poured absolutely beautifully. Um, so before the head disappears, because I don't think it will stick that around that long at 12%, you can see it's poured with about just a very kind of thin layer of what I would call a nice kind of bright fawn coloured hair. I'll just let you have a little look at that. Uh, I'm not sure how well you're going to see it right enough, but the it's pretty much just a ring around the edge of the glass there with a few kind of thin wisps around the edge of it, but it looks absolutely lovely, this one. There's one or two big bubbles sticking toward the side of the glass, a few little ones going up toward the bottom of the head there, but I mean, overall, this does look pretty damn nice, I have to say. I really like yeah, I do really like how this goes together. If we shine the light through this beer, it does have a little bit of that kind of Coca-Cola, uh, Pepsi coloured edge to it. But other than that, it is pretty much black as night. So yeah, pretty much as dark as you're going to get. So remember, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. That goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any barrel aging that you do or any adjuncts that you put in will affect the colour of the beer as well. 
But uh, yeah, in this case, when it comes to Imperial Stouts, it's quite difficult for barrel aging really to affect the colour of the beer. The one thing I would say about this though, I think this beer isn't actually that hazy. Now, the reason that I say that is that because when you shine the light through it, you can get you can see from the edges that it is actually quite clear. I think the reason this one comes across as being so opaque is simply due to the kind of colour of the malts. So yeah, that's definitely worth bearing in mind uh, with this beer. But I have to say it looks absolutely beautiful. And it's pretty much as you would expect for uh, an Imperial Stout of any description, to be honest with you. So um, yeah, I think this is going to be very nice actually. So let's have a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on. I don't think there's anything else we need to say about the appearance of this beer. So aroma time. Ooh, yeah, um, that is very, very nice. I've actually noticed this recently. There are quite a few breweries doing these kind of straight up bourbon barrel aged imperial stouts. I think it, um, I think it goes together really nicely, actually. Um, Yeah, the aroma on this is just absolutely lovely. So, yeah, the the backbone of this one, it's one of these beers that it doesn't give you anything that you don't expect from the aroma. And I'm curious to see whether that's going to be reflected in the flavour as well. But it's just really, really damn nice. And, you know, there's so many breweries out there these days. There's so many different beers. You, you really just can't ask for much more than for them to do these beers well. You really can't. Um, but yeah, if we sugar this beer up a little bit, it's interesting. So you can smell the nice, the backbone of this beer is definitely a nice kind of smooth, oaky character. You can smell that right away. I do get little hints of kind of vanilla out of it. You always get this from bourbon barrel aging. Compared to Scotch whiskey, I always found that bourbon is a bit brighter and a bit sweeter, whereas the Scotch whiskey is a little bit more kind of grainy and dark and things like this. But um, yeah, you can smell that lovely smooth oaky character. There's a wee bit of vanilla in there. You have the um, yeah lovely smooth oaky character. A wee bit of vanilla, and definitely you can smell a little bit of a kind of brown bready and bread crusty note out of this one. I see on the the I can I can definitely see why on the label they're saying a bit of tobacco. There is a wee bit of that going on with this one. You can smell that nice kind of dry character to it. But certainly I can smell a wee bit of the kind of roasty toasty black malts. So that's great. Um. Yeah, there's a nice wee bit of a roasty toasty black malt coming out of it. Um, yeah, definitely some nice kind of brown bready characters as well. But you've also got... Um, yeah, you also have this really nice, should we say... Yeah, you've also got a little bit... You can smell a wee bit of chocolate in this one for sure. So... I get a mix of, um, it smells like it's around a kind of 50-60% cocoa chocolate. It's starting to get towards that kind of dark end of the cocoa spectrum, so definitely getting a bit of that in there. But there are also little milky elements in there because of the presence of the vanilla from the bourbon barrel aging. So that's quite interesting. The chocolatey side of this beer is quite nice. But as I say, definitely some kind of brown bready bread crust in there. A wee bit of a, um, there's definitely a good little bit of brown sugar, so I get a nice little bit of sweet caramel. Um, oh, my belly's rumbling, I'm getting hungry. Um, so, yeah, definitely getting a nice little bit of sweet caramel out of this one for sure. Um, but you can also smell some kind of nice toasty brown sugars underneath it. So a little bit of toasty brown sugar, a bit of an oily kind of sweet caramel in there. Maybe a little bit of a treacle molasses too. But I also get wee hints of kind of McVitie's digestive biscuit as well. The interesting thing with this is that I don't get too much in the way of a kind of leathery brown sugar so that's quite interesting because normally if you had like a if you had like a leathery brown sugar then that would um if you had a leathery brown sugar that would indicate that the beers had a longer warp boil um, and quite often with imperial stouts they will put along they will do a longer warp boil just to kind of thicken them up and things like this so i'm curious to see how that's going to uh, come out in the flavor but the other thing is we have to remember with this when it's barrel aged Quite often with barrel aged beers, you sacrifice a little bit of the thickness of the mouthfeel in favour of getting these more, um, in, in favour of getting these more kind of infused flavours. So we have to bear that in mind with this one too. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But I mean, overall, this is a really, 
really nice beer. It actually reminds me in a lot of ways of the aroma that we had from the, the Steve Berry. It's big bourbon barrel aged Imperial Stout. I think that was the name of it. It was just called Bourbon Barrel aged Imperial Stout. So it's kind of quite similar to that one in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, other than that, I don't think there's too much to say about the, uh, the aroma, the malty side of things. The only other thing I would note is that there's a few little bits of nutty character coming out of it. So yeah, I like that. I do like that actually. Uh, but yeah, on the hoppy side of things then. So there's definitely a wee bit of an earthy character to this one. I think that's fair to say. You do get the remnants of a little bit of a floral, aromatic sort of thing. Um, and there's also a wee touch of, uh, of grassiness to this one too. So uh, yeah, I like how that goes together. There's a nice wee bit of a kind of, you do get a little bit of a residual kind of hop character in this one. It has been aged for 12 months in barrels, of course. So remember, most of the hoppy character will have dropped out of this beer to an extent, but you can get a little bit of that green component just sort of uh, lingering there. Absolutely. Um, yeah. The aroma out of this one is just lovely. Um, but yeah, a little bit of earthiness, a wee bit of herbal character, some floral notes lingering over and a wee touch of a light grassiness uh, as well. So yeah, the the way the aroma the way the aroma goes together in this one I think is um is pretty nice. I do like how that all goes together. The fruity side of this beer is quite interesting. Uh, I start to get the more that I smell of it, I start to get a little bit of a kind of chocolate brownie sort of vibe to it. But then on top of that, you've got some nice red fruity notes, and the red fruity notes are actually fairly sharp in this one. There's a wee bit of a raisiny character for sure. Um. Yeah, a little bit of a raisiny note to it. There's some kind of uh, plums as well. Raisins, plums, and a wee bit of blackberry, actually. For me, it's the raisins and the blackberry that are kind of sticking out of this one. There are one or two more kind of dry, fruity characters underneath. But, yeah, the the sharper fruits are sticking out to me a little bit more in terms of the aroma of this beer. But I have to say, the aroma of this is absolutely lovely. So, yeah, take a bit of time to... Uh, enjoy that before you get stuck into the beer but let's crack on with this one then and see how we go so this is the gargantua a 12 percent bourbon barrel aged imperial stout from slowburn brewing cooperative in fedovra on salens to the southwest of copenhagen in denmark let's get stuck into this one slanja skull cheers Ooh, that is very nice. I'm going to say straight away, I don't regret shelling out a little bit more for this one. Um, this is quite different as well. First impression of it is that it's an extremely smooth and very silky Imperial Stout. This is very, very nice actually, but quite different from the other uh, bourbon barrel aged things that I've had in, uh, in recent times. But uh, yeah, don't regret buying this one, definitely not. Yeah, that is um, very, very nice. It's really, it's this is one of the smoothest Imperial Stouts I've come across in quite a wee while, actually. Um, the other thing I should point out about this is that it is only barley malt that's been used in this one. There's no oats or wheat in this. Um, so that's that's also worth noting because may, you know, many stouts these days, they're putting oats and oat and wheat and things in them just to kind of thicken them out and smoothen them out. This one... Is, uh, is more old school. This is all barley malt. Um, to an extent, this beer reminds me of the plate of what was called the plain dark beer from New Barnes Brewery uh, that was that was out recently uh, back home in Scotland, and that was that was a lovely, lovely beer. But um, it kind of reminds me of that, but it's a lot more smooth. And the fl I think if you took away the barrel aging from this one, it would be very similar. To that beer but of course we reviewed the barrel aged version of the plain dark beer and it's quite that it was actually quite similar to this in some ways so um yeah this is pretty damn cool actually hmm. yeah i'm going to just say straight away that's an awesome awesome beer i mean if slow burn can do imperial stouts like this um 
I'm, as I say, very curious to have a look at the, the barley wine. I think the barley wine's called Fenrir. I'll need to see if I can get a bottle of that from somewhere. Um, but I'd love to see them have a go at a Scotch Ale. And uh, they're good at lagers as well. So a Doppelbock or an Icebock could actually be quite uh, interesting from these guys as well. So, yeah. This is awesome. Let's try and break this down for you and just describe it a wee bit more in depth as we always do. So, yeah. Um, the, the backbone of this beer then, is, this is one of these ones that's actually quite similar to the aroma, but it's just, uh, it's even smoother. So let's focus on that middle third of your palate just now. The base... The base of this beer, it has a lovely, uh, you get that lovely smooth American oak to this one. And remember, American oak is a different species from European oak, so you will notice a bit of a different taste between uh, these woody flavours. Uh, you get that lovely smooth American oak in there. Toward the front of that middle third of the palate, uh, you can feel there's a little bit of vanilla kind of coming out in there. And you will get one or two little nutty elements within that vanilla as well, actually. But yeah, that's the base of this beer. On top of that, you'll get that thin, kind of almost crisp layer of the brown sugar from the bourbon whiskey. You can really taste that in this one. Um, so yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of really interesting stuff going on in that that very base layer of the beer. The wood, the smooth oak, the little bit of vanilla and nutty character. Then just the layer of it, of the bourbon brown sugar in this. It's, it's absolutely lovely. It really is nice. So sitting on top of the layer of uh, sitting on top of that layer of brown sugar, you get a nice little bit. There is a wee bit of that kind of brown bready rye bread bread crust, and I, I think that works. Uh, I do think that works really really well. Um, so yeah, a little bit of brown bread bread crust. Oh, and there's a thin layer of a kind of brown bread on top of that. But then you're starting to get some of the more kind of chocolatey notes out of this beer. And I would say that further into the aftertaste, you do, pardon me, start to get a little bit of a drier element out of this. There's a wee, there is a wee kind of, um, you know, I can see, I, I can definitely see why they say tobacco in this one, but I, I don't smoke, of course. I've never smoked in my life. So I wouldn't know so much about the flavour. I know what tobacco smells like, actually, because we used to do experiments with it. In the uh, we used to do a bit of experimentation with it in organic chemistry and stuff. So I can see I can it it tastes I guess uh, uh, as I would imagine it, it tastes as I imagine based on the aroma. So you, I can see within the kind of bready character you do get a wee bit of this what I would imagine is tobacco flavour. But the further you go into the aftertaste with it, you start to get a more kind of toasty, well fired bread crusty note out of it. But sitting on top of that kind of brown bready, sitting on top of that kind of brown bready layer you do get a bit more of a, you get a bit more of that, I would say, you get a little bit of a more kind of chocolatey note coming out of it. So toward the back of that middle third of your palate, you get maybe a sort of 60, yeah, about a 60% cocoa chocolate. But as you move further forward, as you move further forward toward the front of that, front third of your palate, there's a wee bit of a more, um, there is a wee bit of a more kind of, it moves towards the lighter end of the chocolate. So you start to get like a 30, kind of 40% milky chocolate character out of this. But then sitting within, sitting on top of that kind of bready layer, there's more of a kind of, you get a little circle there and that's where the brown sugars come out of the beer. And that, again, works very, very well in this one. Um, so yeah, the, the, the brown sugary notes that you get in this are really, um, are, are really nice as well. So the, the, the base of the brown sugar note, it has a little bit of that kind of toasty brown sugary character. So it's almost, you've got that circle in the middle of your palate just sitting on top of the chocolate. So you got a bit of a toasty brown sugary note in there. On top of that, it starts to get a little bit more kind of oily. There is a wee bit of a treacly molasses kind of note to this one. I don't get the leathery notes that I was talking about. So I don't think this beer has had a particularly long wort boil, but of course when it's barrel aged, you know, 
that might not be quite as obvious in it. But yeah, a little bit of toasty brown sugar, a bit more of an oily treacle molasses sort of thing. And then on top of that, you start to get the slightly sweeter caramel. And maybe as you go out from the, the dead centre of your palate, there's a wee, a wee touch of a kind of biscuity character to it. But yeah, toasty brown sugar, a more treacly molasses kind of thing, and then a sweeter caramel on top. I think that's a fair way to describe this one. So it's a very, the, the most complex part of this beer is the middle third of the palate. And you get all these nice layers beer. So you've got the wood, the bourbon sugars, the brown, the, the bread crust and the brown bread, then the chocolatey layer, then you've got the kind of brown sugars sitting on top of that. That is, um, that, that's definitely for me, that's what's kind of going on in this one actually. So yeah, the way that this goes together, I think is very, very nice. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else we really need to say about that middle third of the palate then. Let's focus on the back third of the palate and the hoppy side of things. So border region between that middle third and back third of your palate, again you get a little bit of a bready build up in there, a wee bit of bread crust, and the back third of the palate, you can feel that roasty toasty, you can definitely feel that kind of roasty toasty uh, bready base to the beer. So yeah, roasty toasty bready base. Um, or some, well, in fairness, some of the wood is there. You do get some of the kind of woody characters there, but on top of that, you get the roasty, toasty, bready base. You get a slightly thicker brown bready layer, but then on top of that, you're getting more yeasty elements out of the beer. So for me, the yeasty character of this beer is a little bit more, you can feel that slightly more dense brown bready character too. It's a little bit sticky almost. You do get a little bit of that. And in fairness, in the back third of the palate, you do get these kind of sort of tobacco-y light flavours actually. So... That's interesting for sure, but there's a wee bit of a kind of, you know, it's like, it's kind of like you've got that dense, doughy, brown bready, yeasty layer. Then on top of that, there's more of a kind of, um, how would we say, you do get a little bit of a more, you get a bit of that kind of more toasty bread crust. So I, I really like how all of this pieces together, actually. Yeah, so you can feel that on the back third of your palate, the flavour is most definitely, the flavour on the back third of your palate is most definitely taller. Then as you come further forward, it just condenses down, it just condenses down a little bit more and squashes together. And this is quite common in these kinds of beer, of course, but uh, yeah, the malty and yeasty side of this beer is really, really nice. It doesn't do anything that isn't expected of the style, but um, this is just a very very well done beer. If you like the plain dark beer from Slowburn, uh, for the plain dark beer from New Barns in Scotland, and the barrel aged version of it, you will certainly enjoy this one. This is one of the smoothest and kind of silkiest um, barrel aged imperial stouts that I've had in quite some time. So this will cost you a bit more, but it's definitely worth it. And it is. it, it certainly has convinced me that I need to try and get a bottle of the Fenrir. So I need to look out for that when I go over to Copenhagen next. Uh, but yeah, let's focus on the hoppy side of the beer then. So, back corners of the palate, there is a little bit of a smooth kind of earthiness in there. As you go further forward, it's a little bit herbal, and then as you push towards the kind of front corners of the palate, um, it, that kind of herbal quality carries forward, but you do get just a little tiny bit of a floral aromaticity around, out of this one. But around the front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and more sort of, um, and more sort of grassy. But uh, yeah, as you say, it's a it's a it's a barrel aged imperial stout. Most of that hoppy character is it has dropped out of it, of course. So you need to bear that in mind. But let's focus on the front third of the palate and the fruity side of things. So, pardon me, the border region between front third and middle third of your palate. Again, you get a little bit of a bready. You get a little bit of a bready build up with this one for sure. So you can feel that there. You do get a little bit of a kind of chocolate brownie note within that border area, and that sort of spreads forward. And forms the base of that, uh, and forms the base of that front third of your palate. So I do like that actually. I really do like how that goes together. Um. So yeah, the way that that goes together, it's really nice. You do start to get some of the kind of bourbony brown sugars forming the base of there as well. So. It, the front third of your palate really has this chocolate brownie but dried fruit cakey type vibe to it which is interesting. So the fruits in this one, I would say the fruity character of it is actually a little bit different from what I thought it was going to be to be honest. But let's focus on the fruity thing. So on top of that there you get that nice oily bubble 
where those juicy, juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer. So at the back of that front third of your palate, there is a wee bit of a kind of raisiny sharpness to it, which I really, really enjoy. But then um, underneath that, you get a bit of plum, but I find that very quickly, it actually gives you a lot of these kind of more dainty, pruny type things. You get a little bit more of this kind of dainty, pruny base to it, which is interesting. And as you move into the front half, of that front third of your palate, it's got a little bit more of a kind of dry black currantine type vibe. So the fruity side of this beer in the flavour is actually really quite different from what you pick up in the, the aroma in a lot of ways. So yeah, bear that in mind with this one. Yeah. Um, Yeah, the, the fruits, it really has a bit more of a dried fruity character rather than that big, sharp, oily thing that I was expecting. Because in the, in the aroma, it really came across as more, um, it came across as more kind of raisiny and blackberry-like. But it has a lot more of a kind of dainty, pruny, uh, black currant -y sort of thing to it. So yeah, it's, it's got a lot more dried fruity character to it than I would have expected this one. So that is that is very interesting to me, I have to say. I do like how that... Um, how that goes together in this one. So it gets a thumbs up um, from me in that regard. This is really quite interesting, I have to say. Um, yeah. But overall, this beer, this is just a beautiful beer. This is one that's really tasted my palate. And, you know, after 3,200 beer reviews, you want things that are going to test your palate a little bit. And this one has done that. I don't regret paying, you know, 14 euros or whatever it was for this one. I think it's... Uh, I, I, it's definitely worth it. I've really enjoyed this. And I do want the barley wine now. I'm annoyed that I couldn't find the barley wine. But um, yeah, this is this has been very, very nice to try. Let's round off this review then with a little quick look at the, the mouthfeel then. So mouthfeel wise, this beer, um, it's full bodied. I don't think there's any doubt in my mind about that. But I think it's in the kind of middle range of the full body. It's not the thickest one I've had, but I think... If it wasn't for the barrel aging, it might well be. Um, so it's got that lovely big kind of thick mouthfeel to it. As I've repeated a few times, it's got a really big kind of silky, smooth sort of vibe to it. So yeah, I really like how um, I really like how this one goes together in a lot of ways. But yeah, it has uh, when it's only a barley malt when it, when it's when it only contains barley malt and not oats and wheat and things. It really is very impressive how smooth this beer is. So as I say, um, mid. Mid-range, full-bodied beer, this one. Very big, thick and smooth, silky kind of mouthfeel to it. It's absolutely lovely. In terms of uh, IBUs and things like that, I really don't know with this one. I think this might be about 40 or maybe about 40 IBUs. It doesn't strike me as being overly bitter. It is more kind of smooth and like it has that kind of dry sweetness to it, which I really enjoy. But the malt base, as we said, it has a smoothness, uh, a bit of a sweetness to it. Uh, well, a little bit of a savoury kind of character as well and a sweetness in there. So it's really nice. Uh, from that perspective, the hoppy side of the beer is very smooth as well. Then you've got a lot of dried fruity character to this one. But I think overall, it's just fair to say that this is just a beautiful, beautiful beer. And it gets a massive thumbs up from me. I really like how this one uh, goes together. So yeah, big thumbs up to Slowburn Brewing Cooperative for this one. I've really, really enjoyed tasting this beer. Um, yeah, it definitely makes me curious about the other things in their barrel aging program. So hopefully I can find the Fenrir barley wine at some point. And I'd love to see these guys try like an ice bock or a scotch ale at some point as well. But uh, yeah, let's leave it there. So this one was the Gargantua 12% bourbon barrel aged Imperial Stout from Slowburn Brewing Cooperative in a Fedovra to the southwest of Copenhagen on Sealand in Denmark. One of the best Danish beers I've had, I think, this one. I think that's fair to say. But uh, yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Slowburn Brewing Cooperative as well. And we will no doubt return to these guys again at some point in the fairly near future. But in the meantime, check out my social media, check out their social media, and I will see you guys in the next review. Slanjit, Skull, cheers. Do make sure you check out Slowburn Brewing Cooperative.